Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming and Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be on securing the front end. In our last video we secured the data file by simply putting a password protection on it. But we can't really do that with the front end file because we want our users to just basically be prompted with the login screen. If we password protected it and just left it at that, once the user put in the password they would still have a lot of, they would basically still have full admin rights and developer rights to that database. And we really want to start limiting the user's access to the different functions of your database. So I'm going to hop out of my uh, PowerPoint presentation here. And if I open up the database right now, you'll see that I get the navigation pane on the left hand side. And this is not good because if I just want to open up the employees table, I can get people's passwords and usernames and wages and date of birth and all sorts of private information. So clearly we don't want our users to just have full access to this kind of thing. Then, if the user right clicks on something, notice they get this little context menu. We probably don't want that to happen. We don't want them to be able to just right click on something and get access, especially if it's like the login form, for example. If I right click here, I can close it. So that's not good. I don't want them to be able to do that. Then when it comes to the ribbons up top here, we've got the Create tab, the External Data tab, the Database Tools tab. These are all things that the users probably should not have access to. We only want the developers to have access to that type of thing. So we're going to shut down the access to all of this. And again, like I said before, we really want it so that when the database opens up, the user is printed, presented with the login form and all of these different security issues are taken care of. So luckily for us, this is actually all available in one simple little place. It's going to be under the File tab, under Options, under Current Database, and here we have those options that we kind of covered a few uh, a few episodes ago. But I'm going to go over a few more of the uh, a few more of them a little bit more deeply here. Under the Display form here, if I click on the drop down, you'll notice that all the forms that I've created are now available. I'm going to go ahead and select Form Login. And what this does is when the database opens, the FRM login form will start up automatically. So again, when the user opens up the database, the first thing the user will be presented with is our login form. And that's exactly the type of functionality we want. Okay, I'm going to scroll down here and under navigation, there's this little checkbox here next to display navigation pane. I'm going to uncheck that and that will get rid of the navigation pane over here on the left hand side. If I scroll down a little further, I've got Allow Full Menus. And if, uh, if I uncheck this, this will disable all of the extensible functionality that's available through these tabs, like the Create tab, External Data tab, Database Tools tab, etc. So all of those tabs will disappear for the user, and that's precisely what I want. Then lastly, we have Allow Default Shortcuts menu, and that's essentially the right mouse button click. Okay, That's the context menu that can come up. I'm going to go ahead and disable that as well. So now that I've got everything disabled, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It says I need to close and reopen the database for the changes to take effect, so let's go ahead and do that. And now when I reopen the database, you'll see I get prompted with the login screen. Okay and my file tab and home tab are the only two tabs that are available. You'll notice the create tab is gone along with all the other tabs and my navigation pane on the left hand side is also gone. But not only that, when I designed this login form, if you recall we turned it into a modal form which basically means the user must interact with this form and this form alone. They cannot click on anything behind it. I'm getting a little beep sound that tells me you're doing something wrong. So I'm really limiting the user's access to just this one single form. And that's exactly the type of thing that I want to do. So let me go ahead and log in here. Oops. If I put the right password in. All right, there we go. Okay, so I'm logged in here. I really have only the access to those things available for my home tab, my file tab, navigation pane is gone, I can't right click on anything, so great, we've got all the limited functionality we want. But there's a bit of a problem. If I, as the user, with all my options disabled, if I click File here, and I go to Privacy Options, uh-oh, I can go into the current database and undo everything you just did. 
right? So that's not good. I don't want that to happen. Well, let me go ahead and turn all this stuff back on here because I'm going to show you how to take care of this. Okay. First thing I need to do is I need to go and create a new table. Okay, so I'm going to go to Create. And I'm going to go to Table Design. And here in my table design, I'm going to make two fields. One is going to be called Ribbon Name. Notice the capitalization here. It's going to be a type of short text. Then the next field is going to be Ribbon XML. Again, notice the capitalization. And it's going to be a type of long text. Okay. Then the, under Ribbon Name, I'm going to go ahead and make this the primary key. And just a word to those of you who might still be using Office 2010 or 2007, instead of long text, you're going to need to use Memo, Okay, just in case you uh, are still on one of the older versions. Okay, so we've got ribbon name, ribbon XML, short text, long text. Now we need to go ahead and save the table, and it's going to be called U-Sys Ribbons. And again, notice the capitalization here, capital U, capital S, capital R. Okay, so that's great. Now I've got my U-Sys Ribbons table. I'm going to go ahead and open this up in the, um, in the table view here. And let's expand this out so I can see everything. Make it nice and big here. Okay, now the first ribbon I'm going to make is going to be, let's call it blank or default. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I've got a little bit of code here, which I'm going to copy and paste into here. Which is a special ribbon that uh, basically s uses the current ribbon, okay, um, but it, it also disables the application options dialog, okay, and that's that options function that's available up here in file. So you don't really need to worry about this. This is XML code here, uh, and you know later on we may cover ribbons at a later point. But for right now, just copy and s copy what you see up here on the screen. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see exactly the the, the tab situation here. Um, just copy what you see up here. If you feel like you know pausing the video right now, go ahead, jot this down or type it out somewhere because you're gonna need it. Okay. So we went ahead and did all that. Let's go ahead and save that. Close out of that. I'm going to need to close out of my database again, and then reopen it for this to be uh, to be for this new ribbon to be available. I'm going to go to my options, and now if I go under current database, I scroll down here, see where it says ribbon name. I have the drop down here to use default. Click OK, and now watch what happens when I open this up. File. Notice my options are gone. Okay, so the options are gone. All right. Well, okay. I got a bit of a new problem. I need to go back in and turn off all those functions. So I I don't have that options option anymore. How the heck do I get in there and change all those options back? Okay, I created a little web for myself, didn't I? Well, guess what? Us developers know about a little tiny secret that you're going to all want to be clued in on here. If you hold the shift key down when you open up a file, that will bypass all of the options that you set, all the ribbons that you set, and any automatic execution that you've set. So you'll see, I basically still get my file and options. Okay, so I've gone back to basically uh, the default. I have all the, I'll, I'll have my navigation pane, I'll have my ribbon up top here, I'll have my right click ability, and I will bypass the opening of the login form. So let me just go ahead and set all those options back up for you and I'll show you. If I change this back to login form, and that's good as the default, disable that, disable that, disable that, click OK, OK again. And now, when I open up my database as a user, I have to log in. Oops. And now, if I click on File, 
I don't have the options anymore. Okay, I can only print or exit. Isn't that great? So now I've really locked this sucker down. Now some of you may be screaming at your monitor right now going, well, wait a minute, if I know I can hold the shift key down and doing so bypasses all of that and I get all these fancy options back up and I can access all that, well, if I can do it, my users can do it. And you'd be precisely right. If you can do it, your users can do it. Now you could go and you could say, well, I, I hope that they don't figure it out. But really what you should probably do is create some code here. Okay, and I'm going to take you through this. First and foremost, under my, uh, under my employees table here, I've changed my particular account. I've added a new employee type called three. So if you look under employees type, I'm going to call it administrator, and it's got an ID type of three. So any user who has an employee type of three, we're going to need to keep track of this. We're going to use this uh, employee type to determine whether or not the user is going to have certain functionality when they log in. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go to my login form. And let's go to the design view here. And when the user logs in, in the onClick event here, I'm going to add a little bit of code to the onClick event for my login button. Let me scroll down here. And before they log in, I want it, or before the form main opens up, I'm going to check to see what the user's security level is. So let me go ahead and see. Uh, did a find first on table one employees. So let's go ahead and do if rs and I think what what was that security level? Let's see. It was the what was the field name here? It was all right. Employee type underscore id. So let me go back here. Employee type underscore id is equal to three then let's go ahead and close our end if here i'm going to add some code in here that is going to prompt the user if they are a type of employee type three i've got the code already pre-written out here so i'm just going to copy and paste it and this code essentially let me just tab it over make it a little bit more legible is going to set a special property called allow bypass key. Okay, and the way this works is I'm gonna I'm gonna dim a prop as property. I'm gonna set prop equal to a uh, the value returned by the create property method from my current DB. So set prop equal current DB dot create property, and then in parentheses it's gonna be allow bypass key in quotations comma db boolean because it's going to be a boolean type and then we're setting uh, the initial value to false okay you also you may notice i have this on error go to set property that's because if the property is already set when you go to append it to your pr properties you'll kick out an error and so we're just going to go ahead and use the fact that that'll happen to just skip down to the next bit here okay so a little bit of error handling just in case that property already exists then we're going to prompt the user. Again, this is if they are an administrator. It's going to say, would you like to turn on the bypass key? Okay, and that's again the shift key. If the user selects yes, then that will turn bypass back on. If the user selects no, it's going to go ahead and keep it false. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this bit of code. And I'll, I'll leave it up here on the screen for just a second for everybody to pause and type this out. It's going to be starting from, let me just tab this down here. So starting from here at the dim prop is property down to this end if here, you're going to want to put that in your code and make sure that you're checking to see what the employee's security level is or what group they are to make sure that they should be able to get this prompt. Okay. And it's very, very important that you take this step because if you change this allow bypass key to false and you don't give the users any way to turn it back on, you're not going to be able to bypass this. You're going to basically be limiting the the, the um, database forever, and you're not going to be able to get out of it. And you're not going to be able to get into the tables and stuff. You'll never be able to go in as a developer, and that's not good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save it.
debug it, make sure everything's good. It looks like it is. Let's go ahead and close this. And now, if I open it up, and if I log in as me, would you like to turn on the bypass key? I'm going to say no, I don't. Okay, so now the bypass key is turned off. And now I'm going to hold the shift key down when I try to open this. And you'll see, bada bing. Even holding the shift key down, I still don't have any of the functionality. So I have completely, fully locked down my database. No one can get into it. No one can do any of those special functions. The only thing that I can do is log in here. And because I am an administrator, I can do this. I can do... Uh, and now it should ask me, do I want to turn it on? Click yes. Let's turn the bypass key back on. And now if I try to reopen the database holding the shift key down, and there we go. Okay. Now, I highly recommend that before you enter this code on, before you add that property, you should probably make a copy of your database somewhere and make sure you keep it in a safe location that your users will never get a version of. Because you're, you know, just in case you forget the password or something happens to the table and the employees list doesn't allow you to log in as this user anymore, you can really screw yourself good. So make sure you've got a backup plan and you're storing this database somewhere that doesn't have that property set on it. All right. So there you go. That's how you can successfully uh, lock down your database file and not allow your users to get into anything other than what you want them to.